See it, say it, sort it. Sympathy? You must be kidding me. No entry. They look like letterboxes. We want our country back. Fake news. Historically, universities have been places of inquiry, debate and growth. Is that the case for everyone? We conducted a survey with over 2,000 students attending around 90% of UK universities. And we interviewed over 200 students and staff where we asked, what is your experience of Islam on campus? These are their words. All the things that society tends to put on Muslims manifests itself on campus. I originally thought it was down to a lack of diversity, but I came to this university and people say the same things, just more eloquently. People think either I've been forced to wear it, or I don't have an understanding, or I need to be liberated by someone else. It's an oppressive article of clothing. The first thing that comes to my mind, a bomb thrower. Arab equals Muslims, Muslims equal terrorists. Stop! I've reached a point where it's tiring to constantly justify my spiritual practices, like why I pray or cover. I love my abayas and dresses. They're a part of how I choose to express my identity. People should be able to accommodate that. Launched in 2003, Prevent, one strand of the UK government's counter-terrorism strategy, aims to address the underlying causes of terrorist acts and radicalisation. It has been criticised for targeting and demonising Muslims. How does this play out on campus? The irony for me is, you asked to look for signs of change and the Prevent? We're in a university. That's what students come here to do. I wanted to take out some books on Islam just to explore my religion, but I decided against it in case I get in trouble. I got my friend who is white to take them out for me instead. It just felt safer that way. It's not just about Islam either. People who may be beginning to express questions about authority, about foreign policy, wider political issues. One of the things a university provides is a forum for debate, or at least it should do. Radicalised thinking happens only when you have a very narrow understanding of Islam. In academic institutes, this is less likely to happen. When you talk to your lecturers, they broaden your understanding of religion. This has been my best seminar so far. It's taught by a Muslim academic who teaches gender studies and sexual equality. For the first eight weeks, she set a reading curriculum of mostly Muslim writers. I was like, hallelujah, alhamdulillah. Oh my gosh, she's so inspiring. In her class, you can discuss religion and its cultural proliferation. You can discuss these things. How can we understand one another? So if I ask you why you wear the hijab and what it means to you, I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't. I'm just trying to find out why it's important for you. If you ask me why I'm wearing it, then I should be able to ask you why you're wearing jeans. Also, it's not as straightforward as simply being curious. If you're asking why, as if this doesn't look like it belongs here, then that's not a neutral question, and it's moving towards prejudice. I wouldn't ask after two or three lunches together. I'd ask after breaking bread maybe 10 times. Religion is a very personal thing for a lot of people. It gives them strength. It's the reason they're surviving or why they're waking up every day. The current media representation of Islam that surrounds us is very simplistic. And if students can't hear the complex version of religions and culture at university, then where else will they hear it? How can we honour each other's complexity and ensure we all belong? <laughs>